when we make a deal of NBC, even if we don't come into the picture, the data money disappears. The question is that why are we giving so importance to money vis-à-vis -vis our own life? This is the fundamental question that we go to ask. You will never write from the 2000 years back to this side, 2500 years back when he decided to tell me. When he decided, yeah, I'm going to preach this. The world has not changed that. Everybody has their agenda. But our agenda should be how to have a dear crop coming out, which will feed uh, the nation. So everybody thinks that no, we will not accept it. The minute all the night people start accepting things, no corruption, finish. It will happen. But when it comes to me, I put my hand in my pocket and say, that doesn't work. So I think that it's not it's a morality. And you know, I just read a, a, a nice article on morality. It's morality of Africa in on auction. <coughs> Who pays for it? The highest gifts? We don't. I think that fundamentally this is not a problem about, about education, whether it's technical, whether it's other. It's, a, it's an education about other children growing up. How you grow them, how you put in them, they will produce this stuff. You tell them that this man you never see, they are there. He will always look at them, oh, that, that is bad. So, uh, all I am trying to say is that open up Africa for ourselves. Let's call ourselves as one African nation. Rather, get together and with good quality of values, set of values. And set of values can only be given to school. No values. So, please, I think that don't turn away from the responsibility because you are know, but with the corruption. Yeah, it is a corruption. It touches me also, but I don't. I said, sorry. The only response now is if you feel that yes, go to the morning and you're all prevented, you find the same. Don't accept it. You cannot change unless first you change. We write, and I cannot expect you to do it. It's something else. Change sides. So we have one more comment. Yes. Uh, I think this is question about. Uh, Polytechnic, Nigeria, as we rightly stated. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, the guest speaker, I think the Chancellor of the Kenya Technical University, uh, members of the High Chavo, and my dear colleague, the participants for the CAPA 2016 holding here in Mombasa, Kenya. Um, first, you just excuse me one minute, I would like to congratulate the CAPA organizing committee for deeming it wise to invite the immediate speaker uh, who is well educated uh, and entrepreneur by excellence and he spoke extensively well in the area that matters so much to Gaba. Now, with respect to the stigma on technical education, Mr. Chairman, sir, the speaker rightly put it. This was the subject of a very thorough discussion we held uh, in the World Skills Conference in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And it was generally accepted that truly, over the years, technical and vocational education has suffered the stigma. But what is the way forward? And for me, and I think the only way forward is that we charge countries to review their energy policy. Basically, you can separate technical education with energy. I'm talking of electricity power. The outcome, the products of all the training you do in our technical institutions 
actually ultimately end up in the industries. And without electricity, you can't have industries. I know in Nigeria, in the 60s and 70s, particularly in the same institution I'm heading, Kabina Polytechnic, I'm the rector there, industrialists, people come to queue up to line up or are graduates at the gates when they are graduating because the industries were there. And in most cases, institutions then were established within the confines of where industries are, or vice versa. Industries come up as a consequence of the immediate uh, occupation of the people. So you have mostly agro allied industries, the textiles, Kaduna Polytechnic was known for the textiles, and most of the textile industries were actually started within Kaduna, and they get their product directly from Kaduna Polytechnic, the, 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 the staff. So what I'm saying is the role of Kappa, as per the energy sector, we are the heads of technical institutions across Africa. And as rightly put by the speaker, it's a challenge for all of us to speak out in respect of technical and vocational education while we watch it collapse and die. We have a right to speak out to our governments for a pressure group. Say no. Why should Nigeria be generating under 4,000 megawatts? Where and when it can generate more than that? Why should the Congo, where that can generate more than 20,000, generate less? And why should Kenya generate less than what it's currently uh, supposed to provide to its people? We should speak in one voice that by their inaction, and of course, even lack of it, they are practically killing technical education, killing the future of the youth, and as you rightly put it, if in Kenya you have 4 million youth birds, I assure you, get a geometric multiplying factor, you get that in Nigeria. We owe it a duty to all of us to put the pressure. Perhaps Kappa can come up with a mechanism. I want to believe we may have a way of meeting to discuss this. So, my take on this essentially is that Kappa, at the end of the day, she come up with a mechanism of ensuring sustainability of electricity within the countries for enhanced performance in the technical sector. Thank you very much. Yes, um, my take on it is our responsibility. Yes, Kaba can, can put up all kinds of, of, of conditions, but we as technical educational institutions also have a responsibility. We need to strengthen technical educational education on our campuses. What kind of people do we take in? What is our focus? Are we focusing on staff and students concurrently? How do we ourselves see our programs? We need to make technical education effective. And the trend now is to take in people who are affected <coughs> by the university. If we don't strengthen it ourselves, the responsibility, governments will always find a way to give us something that is not worth technical education. So yes, we must put other, make other people responsibility, but we as individual institutions should also learn individually to attract the right people, the capable people, and to make, learn, how, learn how to make industries responsible, create our own networks, produce people who can go out there and work, and make our systems attractive so that Government can also beg us or run to us instead of us always doing the other way around. So the responsibility begins with us and maybe it should be a holistic. As we think of our responsibility, we think of government and then of course we start with Africa and then maybe we can move on. Thank you. Yes, mention your name please. Redistress Galagala National Polytechnic, Kenya, Kapabenda County. I would just like to pick up from where my colleague, Madam, has talked. And she's talking about our individual institutions, where we come from. And I would like to link it up to 
what Dr. Chandaria has just said, that it is our responsibility, technical education must start with us, change must start with me. So my concern is this, uh, of how much influence is our technical institution, right even from our local environment? Are we felt right at the ground? Each of our institutions, is it felt? Are we able to produce those graduates who can transform our communities? And just like technical education must start with us, I just can't help asking myself, kindly I beg your indulgence, all of you and the able immediate speaker, how many Manu Chandarias we have? Have we exerted our circle of influence so that those whom we interact with will feel our influence, will feel our technical education, so to say, will feel that indeed there is a difference in this individual. So that we increase our circle of influence and little by little, it will start from the top. We will have a hundred marriages. We would have a hundred uh, uh, little registrars of technical institutions. We would have a hundred of all those that we interact with, and therefore we will change our community. So my concern is, how much is our circle of influence? We'll just sit here and say we are not doing much, but how much are we able to? Thank you. But let me give an example which uh, how how could be made to change. Things will change is a hope. Things can change is another plus hope. But how things can be made change? That's what we call it in 1772, 73. I came to Kenya again from Tanzania. My service at Tanzania, service in Uganda, and came back to Nairobi again. There was no environment for industry. Nobody would listen. Government would think that these guys are all looters, and we think the government is just corrupt. That's all. These are the only two things in my particular idea. So, I joined Kenya Associates of Manufacturing. From that membership, I became a director, I became a because I wanted to see what can be done. And from the director, I became a vice chairman, I became a chairman. I changed the constitution of KM, and KM is now one of the very powerful organizations of KM. At that time, again, we started East African community. Uh, which was there in 1970 or 1968 or something like that. So, again, the second general came and asked that, you private sector people are not doing anything as far as East Africa is concerned. Why don't you, Mr. Manu, set up East African organization which will represent the interest at, at Arusha, at East African community? So I said, okay. And what you created is East African uh, Business Council, which I started, I worked for it, and, and I was the first founding chair. Later days, about 12, 13 years back, my Kibaki came to pass. And I called a meeting and asked us, uh, we'd like some understanding between private sector and between the government. And I said, what is the, what is the, what is, how, how do you do that? He said, look, we want only one thing. Why don't you have an umbrella body of all the private sector institutions so that we can then understand and talk? I told you, listen, it's not supposed to be last day. There are about 50 private sector people in that meeting. They said, no, it cannot be done. They said, why are you laughing? I said, look, every institution has got a board of directors and has got a chair. And chairman has got a, a what you call, an ego bigger than their children. And even board directors have got even bigger egos than their children. Now, I put them all in one basket, it's not really possible. But they were, they were very interested. They said, look, no, you must, uh, please, think about it. The next morning, again, they told us, they said, please, have you decided? And I said, well, and we just, we again said, no, we are not smiling at you, we're not 
laughing at you, but we cannot do. So he said, I challenge you. And I said, don't give me the challenge alone, but there are only 50 people sitting over here. Give them the challenge. And I asked him, everybody, would you take a challenge? They said, yes. All right? And on our side, he said, if we are going to make it, we want government to open up every office. We should be able to go and walk into the minister's office and place his office. Because, and we want all the lists. They said, yes. And if the government does not work at the bureaucracy level, then we should go to the government secretary, that's his office. He said, yes. It became one strong element. Because we wanted to help a top quality people representing the industry and the business. At the time. So we told him, look, we don't want only this part, but we want a presidential round table. The last time we had a president's round table, we had a speaker's round table, we had a judicial round table. All was this unity and capacity to work together. If all of you decide, yes, we want to do it, I think that we can. It's not, it's not impossible. Nothing is impossible. So, you decide, yes, you want to do it, you can. And unless anything will take first step of change, that without technical education, <laughs> Africa does not save their life for another 20 years. Remember that. It's only us that we can build the capacity and pressure Build a print capacity in the pressure you can do. Unless you need an idea that will do it. I don't know what, what's the difference between me and you. You've got two eyes, two heads, two heads. Everything is just like that. Only the commitment that wants to do it. Wants to do it. I want to do it. That is the only way we can do it. Thank you.
the association presently has about 170 <coughs> post-secondary educational institutions, showing a well-integrated profile of technical universities, polytechnics, and technical colleges that are oriented towards knowledge and skills acquisition for the world of work. In fulfillment of its role, Kappa has recorded significant achievements that include pioneering the introduction of entrepreneurship education as core component of our curricula in its member institution, promotion of women education in Tibet through the establishment of women in technical education and development, capacity building in critical technical professional skills, as well as in institutional management and leadership. While we've been here, for the past four days, that is from the 6th and 11th of June, we deliberated on our theme, strategic involvement of Tibet institutions towards attaining post-2015 sustainable development goals in Africa, and came up with various uh, resolutions under the sub-theme of growing skills, technology, manpower, industrialization and innovation for sustainable development in Africa, we came up with a resolution whereby Tibet should mainstream in the national education system of Kappa member states to, to popularize it rather than making it look like an alternative pathway. And Tibet curriculum should actually be developed on competency-based education and training in order to enhance industrial sector participation. And entrepreneurship development and innovative policies for the promotion of SMEs and employment, Tibet institution needs to mainstream the entrepreneurship training to enhance employment and wealth creation and adopt innovative policies to strengthen the SMEs. And there's also a need to strengthen apprenticeship mentorship and business incubation for successful small and medium enterprise. Under imperative and approaches for social mobilization, Kappa member states need to institutionalize career guidance and mentorship of Tibet graduates to enhance participation in national development programs, and Commonwealth nations need to establish regional regulatory frameworks that support social economic integration and the appropriate technology for agricultural and environmental sustainability, we need to actually train staff and students in waste management. Capacity building for planning and development uh, for sustainable infrastructure in African countries, Tibet-based Tibet regulatory and accreditation bodies need to be established in member countries to assess, certify, and register Tibet institutions and trainers. There's also a need to increase capacity building and development for our Tibet trainers. Effective partnership for skills development in women, Tibet institutions need to be more proactive on women empowerment and capacity building. And the science, research, and innovation, Tibet education should be popularized and emphasized as skills development training pathway for knowledge-based economies and Kappa member states need to establish industries within the precincts of technical training institutions in order to promote research, creativity, and innovation. Challenges that uh, exist should be encountered by establishing endowment funds and competent scholarships dedicated to Tibet scholars and revise the Tibet program so as to increase time allocated for practicals in favor of theory. There should be public-private uh, partnership and in order to increase research and development. With those, I want, with those uh, resolutions, I want also to use this opportunity to really thank our support that we got from the Kenya government by granting us the uh, opportunity to host this conference. Special thanks goes to our cabinet secretary, who, as you noted, despite his tight schedule, came here and was able to officiate the open
opening ceremony. We also want to thank our Tibet Principal Secretary, Tavina Minzi, for sparing time and also chairing a plenary session. We sincerely also appreciate the participation of African Union through the AU Commissioner for Human Resources, Science and Technology, His Excellency Dr. Marshall De Paul Nkonga. We also want to appreciate the Mombasa County uh, government through the able leadership of Governor Ali Hassan Joho, who was actually ably represented by the Education and Children Chief Executive Member. We also want to sincerely thank our local organizing committee through the CATI chairman for the conference organization and logistical support. Last but not least, we want to appreciate all the members who actually participated and made this conference valuable, the input and their active participation in this conference is very much recognized and we want to thank you all. Thank you very much.
next month at the AUC meeting. And he's in charge of spearheading the challenge. Meaning that all our efforts of wanting to get Tibet under, I mean, head by the ministers who introduced it, will now go back to them and say very loudly that we would like this Tibet to be a realization in our continent. I feel very excited that uh, we are reaching that point where the ministers who started this Tibet journey in 1977 are being reminded through us and we are challenged to take this to our ministers and remind them that when they discuss in Addis Ababa there will be support from the AUC uh, Commission. This really excites me. I believe 